All right, thank you, thank you. Uh, my name is David Grant, I'm Mayor of Arden Hills, and I just want to say uh, welcome. Uh, we're glad you're here, we're glad that you could join us tonight. Uh, our goal tonight was to, and is to, allow the residents of Arden Hills to understand where TCAP, also known as Rice Creek Commons, project stands <laughs> today. One of the items that we'll be presenting tonight is how the city portion of the project will be financed. The other item is a discussion on a civic site and possible uses. And in the back of the room, uh, you'll notice a number of boards. Um, I think about three or four of those boards relate to the civic site. We've had a task force that's been looking at possible civic uses. And tonight we want to hear what you think about that. Um, our goal has been to complete a master development agreement by the end of the year. Uh, we've been working with uh, Ramsey County and Alatus, the developer, uh, to find an agreement around a sustainable and manageable plan for the City of Arden Hills. One of the historical challenges uh, of this uh, has been the, the size of the project is the challenge because it is so huge. City of Arden Hills is 10,000 people. This development will increase our population by about 4,000. So it is a sizable project. Uh, we've, uh, we have tried to move forward with caution and input from residents. We recognize the need uh, to move the par project forward. In 2016, the city and Ramsey County work together to identify a lattice as the developer and move forward with the development. At that time, uh, the, there was an agreement and things were clear on areas, um, let me rephrase, um, at that time of the agreement, there were clear areas that we were in agreement on. The city adopted uh, the outline in our comprehensive plan and zoning. Uh, the county subsequently also adopted the plan and the zoning. And that was because it is a joint effort, so both groups got together and we agreed. Um, those areas of agreement included density, zoning, infrastructure costs, and various requirements for the project. Meanwhile, the city and the county continued to negotiate uh, things like financial terms, um, other timelines and details. And meanwhile, uh, the city, the county and Alatus continued to negotiate uh, the sale agreement. In order for the project to move forward, the developer has to, or needs to, actually buy the property from the county. Um, as we were making significant progress, Ramsey County asked the city to increase the previously agreed upon density on the site. Uh, we are not inclined to increase that agreed to density amount. Um, uh, the response from the county was to abruptly put the project on hold and that was rather public in some of the papers and perhaps you've read that. Uh, it occurred last week that the county put the project on hold. Um, we had this meeting scheduled previously and we believe that it's important that we come to you and explain um, not only the financing aspect but get your input on the civic site. So when this project continues on we have that understanding and we have that information so that we can go forward. Uh, it's important that we listen to your thoughts on the civic site. You're going to hear presentations uh, from, from the city in terms of uh, financing, and you'll also hear uh, presentations from a consultant group, HGA, who has worked with the civic site task force to come up with possibilities for the civic site. So with that, um, I'd like to introduce uh, Dave Peralt. Dave is our city administrator, and thank you once again for being here tonight. We look forward to your input. 
Thank you, Mayor and Council. My name is Dave Peralt, and I'm the City Administrator for Arden Hills. So I might touch on a few points the Mayor mentioned, but just to make sure we get, them, get all the points here, is that tonight's presentation is meant to be an update to the public and to gather feedback for the City Council on the development as a whole and for the Civic Site as well. Uh, and before I get too far here, I'd like to do some introductions, if that's all right. I won't go through everyone, uh, but there is going to be an informal session after this for everyone to talk to staff, City Council, and our consultants. So if the City Council would maybe stand up or raise your hand so people know who you are if you don't already. City staff. And then our consultants as well. So we have... Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> and as I mentioned, after this presentation, there's going to be a uh, informal back uh, in the back of the room where the slides are, and people are welcome to come up and ask any of us questions or give feedback. And we do have paper forms as well at the front entrance table, as well as in the back uh, at the slides as well. We will be having this on our website to provide feedback uh, after the meeting once we're able to get all this uploaded onto the onto the site. So with that being said, I'd like to start the presentation. Here's the agenda for tonight. <clears throat> and the first thing I would like to mention is the TCAP update. So as the mayor mentioned, this is the old Twin Cities Army Ammunition Plant, which is about 427 acres and about the size of downtown St. Paul. This development is a big project for our city and for the surrounding areas. We're expecting this site to include retail, office, light industrial, a town center, well-defined neighborhoods with a wide variety of housing options to serve young professionals, families, empty nesters, and seniors. It's going to include parks and open space, as well as trails that provide for a convenient and safe pedestrian access. And uh, one thing I'd like to note too on these slides is so a lot of these images you're going to see tonight are very illustrative. Uh, they might not be exactly what the site's going to look like when it is built out. Um, for example, on this site uh, at the town center, there's quite a bit of blue water around there. Um, that could be blue water, it could be more natural areas, but just an example of how things might look different um, as we progress. So that being said, the next slide I'd like to talk about is the city infrastructure, or the city's responsibility for infrastructure. In order for a project of this size to move forward, a, signif a significant amount of work needs to be done. This includes site grading, construction of a spine road that runs north to south on, de on the development, utilities to provide water and sewer under the road, as well as town center roadways and utilities and stormwater management. Plans and specifications are currently being prepared for these items and are scheduled to be bid in 2019 or later, depending on the timing of the project, with construction beginning or following uh, the bid of those, the bid of those con contracts. The city's responsibility on the site is a water tower, and this is to provide adequate pressure and fire flows and will be, will be built as demand dictates. Right now, we're looking at 2023, uh, approximately, um, and this will be located in the southeast corner of the development, as you can see uh, by the red arrow. The city will also be responsible for trunk sanitary sewer and lift stations and a trunk water main and booster station, all of which are expected, expected to be installed uh, during the construction of the spine road. Do you want questions at all? We are not actually having a formal Q&A with this presentation. We're going to do them after with the informal session. Uh, the next thing that people like to hear about are the parks on the site. We do have three major parks on the site. They are called out in the red boxes on the slide. The one to the north is the Creek Neighborhood Park. The one in the middle is the Town Center Park. And the one to the south is the, is the Hill Neighborhood Park. These parks are to be constructed by, by the developer due to an existing memorandum of understanding with the city. Uh, there are, the amenities listed on the slide uh, illustrate what we can expect to see at the parks. Um, but to add on to that, there's also going to be uh, um, <clears throat> pathways, connections to a trail system, and benches, tables, bike racks, pedestri pedestrian lighting, the things you'd normally expect to see at a city park. The town center park is expected to be constructed uh, early on during the infrastructure portion of the project, and the other two parks will go in with those associated neighborhoods. The next item people like to hear about are the city services on the site. So the city has to provide its basic services, and this includes snow plowing, uh, landscape, uh, <clears throat> landscaping, cutting the grass, cutting the fields. And as for the rest of the city, the city is going to provide these services, or these basic services on TCAP, and additional services will need to be provided as well as there's going to be enhanced services. Uh, for example, uh, when the city plows, snow plows right now, we push that snow to the side of the road. On this site, we might not have the option in the town center or in some other areas when we actually have to haul the snow out of there. 
And so that would be something the city does not normally provide that the, that the site's gonna have to provide for itself. Right now, there is the, the developers working on a master association for the site. And what that would be is a third party would be responsible for these services on the site. And this would help alleviate the need for the city to hire additional staff or equipment to help service the site. The city would just be responsible for the baseline services and working with the master association to provide those. The next item is the financing on the site. I know the mayor had touched on this, and this is an important item for the city because we want to make sure the residents are able to hear what's going on with the site and gather their input and feedback as well. So in order to pay for the city's responsibilities on the site, we have to, we have to know we have to be able to plan ahead and know what those are going to be. Now the city has already incurred planning costs on the site, and I will note that the, uh, it's about a million dollars, and those are rounded estimates, and as well as we're expecting future infrastructure costs as well. And that's to include the, the we discussed earlier, such as the spine road utilities and the water tower and the parks. It's always been a goal of the city council to make sure that residents on TCAP are the ones paying for these services and that residents uh, that currently live in Arden Hills are not on the hook for these, for these costs. So that being said, uh, as you can see on the slide, for example, on the water tower, the special assessments, special assessments on TCAP, those would be applicable only to the residents, on, residents and businesses on TCAP. They wouldn't be incurred by residents outside of TCAP. <clears throat> uh, the next space, the other thing we really want to hear from residents tonight is regarding the civic space. So during the process of zone, zone the TCAP property, 1.6 acres were set aside for a civic space. The city may have the opportunity to partner with the county and developer to negotiate a civic building on the land. The civic designation means the space could be used for a community center, city, city building, park facilities, or another civic use. To help the city council and provide input as to what should go on the site, the civic, a civic, set, civic site task force was formed, uh, comprised of existing city committee and commission members, and they're working with HGA, an architect hired by the city to help guide the public engagement on this process. Uh, that being said, at this point, I would like to turn it over to HGA. Uh, they have a few slides they want to present to you and really give you where they are in the project and then some possible options. And we would really like this feedback uh, from you tonight to know what you feel about these options. Uh, you know, do you like them? Do you dislike them? Um, and then that, those will all go back to the Civic Site Task Force and eventually the City Council uh, so they have a more of an informed decision too when they look forward uh, in this process. Thanks, Dave. My name is Glenn Wagesbeck. I'm an architect with HGA Architects and Engineers. Um, as Dave mentioned, we've been working with the Civic Site Task Force to identify opportunities uh, for programs and building spaces um, on the Civic Site. So um, we've looked at the site itself, um, some categories of programs that could occur in a new community facility, um, just brainstorming some options, and then coming up with some sample concepts. And, um, this will be a brief presentation about that process, and I'd like to invite you um, to join me and my colleague Jennifer um, to view some of those options at the back of the room on the boards and leave some comments. Um, we have post-it notes and some pens you can write on, you know, leave a post-it on the boards, um, and we're there to answer questions and um, have a good discussion. So starting with the site location, this, is, this slide shows an overview of the town center. The site, the site is in a really prominent location um, just across from the uh, town center park and adjacent to a civic plaza. Um, it's really an urban feeling um, site which has it, some opportunities there for programs. This is uh, just from the TCAP master plan. The site's 1.6 acres. Um, which is about the size of the current city hall site, just to give you an idea of scale. Um, this slide shows the different types of program categories that we've been looking at and brainstorming about. Um, they range from common areas that you see in the blue. Um, those are public lobbies, places for, for people to hang out um, and engage in the building, gallery display areas, lounge spaces, general public spaces. The red category, wellness and fitness spaces. Those include spaces such as fitness studios, dance studios, um, exercise spaces, gymnasium, um, and all sorts of uh, support spaces for those, those activities, um, as well as spaces that support multi-generations, young families, um, seniors, um, active adults. The next category in orange, or office spaces. 
uh, building, a community building is going to require some staff, and so we want to be sure we've got the right complement of office spaces for programming. Uh, community spaces. These are in the teal on the lower left. Uh, that indicates uh, gathering spaces, places that may be programmed um, by Parks and Rec or um, could be uh, you know, meeting spaces, dedicated spaces for uh, seniors' activities or art spaces, that type of space. Um, the next category in purple, event spaces. Um, think of banquet spaces, uh, community or family celebration space for those types of activities as well as meetings and other types of events. Um, in green, city hall spaces. One of the things that we looked at was would it make any sense to move the city hall uh, to this site, including the city uh, council spaces, all the city department spaces and associated office areas. And then finally, every, any building will have building support such as restrooms, mechanical equipment, and um, telephone data storage, etc. So these are the categories of uh, things that we are brainstorming about. And there will be individual boards in the back of the room um, with some, some imagery that shows different types of spaces. And I invite you to come and um, have a conversation or leave some comments about the types of spaces you might like to see in a community facility. So once we've done a little bit of brainstorming with the task force, we came up with some options to see what would fit on the site. Um, we originally came up with three options, A through C, and we kind of gave them nicknames. The first one was City Hall Plus. So it's bringing the City Hall to the site, plus something that would make it a little bit more innovative programmatically and make sense in, the civic, in that civic site. Um, so you'll see it's city council chambers, offices, et cetera but as well as some event spaces like banquet space and a restaurant and cafe that could anchor that site. Option B we call the community hub. The idea behind this was there'd be multiple types of spaces that might attract all sorts of different uh, users. Um, so it would be thought of as a civic commons, the building, um, with all sorts of different components such as dedicated art and senior spaces, uh, uh, event space, cafe, conference and meeting spaces, etc. Option C, we decided that what would a, um, a community center with a fitness and wellness focus look like? Um, uh, in this case, uh, we, we looked at a single court gym, a kids multi-purpose gym, some fitness and wellness studio spaces, um, as well as gathering and program office space. Um, it w through our conversations, it was decided to sort of set aside the city hall option and look as well at an option that might hybridize options B and C. And so we developed option D, which is really a combination. So it's you know, maybe somewhat not creatively named the community hub and wellness option. Um, and this one, uh, the heart of it is a multi-purpose two-court gymnasium that could be subdivided for all sorts of different activities could also serve as a big gathering space, a really flexible gym space, um, as well as some dedicated space for fitness, um, arts, uh, seniors activities, and then the complement of program offices. Another thing that came up in the discussion was you know, a coffee shop rather than a larger restaurant might make more sense in a community facility. Um, and so here's an example of what that might look like. Um, this is that last option, option D. Um, the, this option, as well as options B and C, are on a board back there. I invite you to come and um, take a look, and we can um, walk you through what we're what we're showing there. Um, so uh, this option is uh, effectively a two-story building. That's what will fit on the 1.6 acre site. There's a little bit of parking. We're showing to the south of the building. Um, to the north of the building, there's a real opportunity for, for the building to engage that civic plaza space that's part of the master plan. And then it's not shown here in the site plan, but to the east, you'll recall there's a, a park and green space. So it would be really important to develop a connection, whether programmatically or visually, between a new facility and that space. And I won't go through the, the diagrams in great detail. We can do that back. Uh, back in the back informally, um, but that's what I have to present. Thank you. Thank you. 
So obviously the next step is where do we go from here? <clears throat> uh, the city's been in negotiations and we're, as far as, far as the city is concerned, we're still going to continue with those. City staff is still involved. Um, at this point, the council thinks it would be valuable to hear what residents have to say. So we invite you tonight to fill out your forms, uh, talk to council, talk to staff, talk to our consultants. And if you do fill out the paper forms, I should ask that you give those to uh, Jolene and Dawn. They'll be walking around and Dawn's in the back back there. So feel free to give those to them. Um, and really answer, you know, generally what you've heard tonight, give us your feedback. We would like to hear it, uh, especially as it regards to the civic site. Um, the HGA and our Civic Site Task Force has done a lot of work to get to this point, and they want to know to make sure if that's something that residents are interested in, it's something they want, or it's something that maybe, you know, there are more ideas out there that they haven't considered yet. <clears throat> um, and obviously, you know, with the Civic Site as well, there's the question of, you know, constructing it and paying for it, um, and the different options we're looking at those, and those are very preliminary at this point. Um, it is the Council's intent, though, to do that with the least effect on anyone's pocketbook. And we know that's important. It's important to the city council and it's important to residents. So that being said, feel free to provide feedback, talk to staff, talk to council, talk to consultants. Um, that's all I have for you tonight and I thank you for coming.